fans. Right, um, I can kind of see where I'm going with this. This is um, the part two of my entire VHS collection. I know that lots of you um, were quite intrigued by part one and the stuff that I've got in part one. Um, if you haven't seen part one, don't really need to, but um, if you're very curious to know what I have, then by all means go and check it out. Uh, the stream is still available, um, so you can see that if you want to. I'm hoping for this stream that I'm going to be a bit more communicative with my audience. I'm not just going to show the tapes and call it a day. I'm going to attempt, like, if any of you got any questions about, like, how I got them, um, because I didn't go into that much detail last time. Um, so if any of you have, like, any questions at all about the, the tapes I have or anything about them, by all means let me know and I'll answer them. Um, so we're going to begin uh, right away. Um, I do apologise, actually, before we do that. I was going to do this last weekend. It's Tuesday the 13th now. I was supposed to do this during the weekend um, of... I uh, can't even remember when the weekend was. Now, it might have been the Easter weekend. I can't remember. When I, when I did the last one, it was like a week ago now, wasn't it? I can't remember. Um, I do apologise that I haven't done this until now. Um, it's mainly because... I've been a bit busy with things. I had to get the Jaws 3D versus Jaws uh, Revenge trailer out. Um, and that took quite a bit of work because that was quite hard to do, that trailer, because it took a long time to render and everything and I had to get the pieces together. And you know, I'm still editing it. I'm still getting the video together. But I have got. I have given myself a good enough amount of time to, to get that sorted. Um, so I had to sort that out. I also had to sort out a couple of other things, a couple of other things. And I've just been kind of relaxing because it's the Easter holidays. I want to relax a little bit. So that's what I have been doing. So... Um, yeah, I think we're going to get started now, I believe. Um, <clears throat> um, I do apologise that the wire... Um, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't technically need this wire, but I'm going to keep it anyway just to annoy people. Right, um, we're going to begin with a little trilogy, because um, I, like I, like, I like me little trilogies. Um, there's loads on the floor. There's like I think there's like 49 here. Um, as you can see from the title, we're going to go from... Um, tape number 52, I believe, to tape 100. Um, so we'll start off with a little trilogy. It's the original Wallace and Gromit trilogy. We have um, A Grand Day Out. We have The Wrong Trousers. I should try and see if I can scoot that across there. There we go. And we have um, A Close Shave. Now, if any of you talk to me regularly, you'll know that I am a huge fan of um, Wallace and Gromit. I love Wallace and Gromit to bits. Um, I also have, um, which I bought first actually, a little collection tape here which has all three shorts on. I bought this first. This was like one of the first tapes I actually ever received. Um, I think it was, it was like the first, it was like one of the first ten I believe I got and um, the reason why is because I obviously I was a big fan of Wallace and Gromit. I wanted to get like a collection of the Wallace and Gromit shorts because I didn't want to get like the original three separately because I don't know inconvenience or something. But I ended up getting the original three anyway. This doesn't cost me anything because my um, grandmother bought the bought the uh, bought me these at a car boot sale when COVID wasn't a thing. I'm just going to move my microphone a little bit there. Um, so um, the actual uh, collection tape is pretty standard. I haven't rewound it yet. I need to rewind it. Um, pretty standard. Um, it's a, one of the later releases actually. Um, it's not even, what's weird to me, it's not even actually released through BBC Video, it's released through Reader's Digest for some reason. No idea why. Um, there's nothing particularly interesting on the back of it, but there we go. But these are the original ones. Um, these are surprisingly very easy to get these days still. What doesn't Gromit was a very popular short when it first came out, and it still is. Um, and it basically made Ardman, the company that made them, like a very popular British... Um, stop motion company these are like the original three i mean they did do stuff before wallace and gromit but the kind of wallace and gromit shorts these original three they were like the ones that really took them um, to them off so if i remember correctly this is from 1989 i believe um let's see if it says on the back it probably said on the front i can't remember uh this one's from 1993 and this one's from 1994 or five i think it might be 95 uh, yes, it is. 1995. So there we go. The tapes are standard. They're all in very good condition. Um, I'm glad I got them together as well instead of like, having to buy them. Well, I didn't buy them anyway, but it was good that I had to get them. I got them together. Um, so there's there's that one. I think that's been sort of faded there on the U. 
there is slightly faded. Don't know why that is. Um, what's your favorite Wallace and Gromit VHS? Well, my favorite out of the three is the one I'm holding right now, The Wrong Trousers. I do have a soft spot for all three of them, though. Um, the Wrong Trousers is my favorite, mainly because of the uh, chase scene at the end with the train. I, that's a, I don't know how they managed to do that, but that was a very, very good, very, very, very good piece of animation there. The first one, A Grand Day Out, was good. Um, uh, but it, it, since it wasn't kind of, since it took a very long time to make, and since Arvman hadn't really done something like that before, as far as my knowledge goes anyway, um, it was, um, it's quite easy to see a few of like the the bits with it. I think when um, one of the most noticeable kind of issues is the kind of, obviously, because it's stop motion, stop motion is very hard. Um, and so there are a few bits where it's like when Wallace, uh, no, sorry, when Gromit is, um, I can't remember what he's doing. Basically, there is a scene when they're building the rocket ship where you can see uh, Gromit just kind of move um, inexplicably um, for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but a close shave is also very good. A close shave is like the first short where they had like an extra character. Um, I'm wondering, actually, like I'm just thinking about So do these have? Yeah. So all of them, I think, have like extra like BBC stuff. So you can just have a look. Well, we've got the Pingu and Nolly there, a bunch of the stuff I don't really care about. Um, this one has got more kind of children's related stuff. You can see there, Fireman Sam and Postman Pat there. I do remember having some of the original Postman Pat and Wallace and Gromit tapes. There is still one that I'm trying to get my hands on. It's, um, I can't remember what it was. There was, when I was a child, I used to have Postman Pat's one to 10 and ABC, which I think I've never uploaded to YouTube if I'm not mistaken, kind of like another tape I'm going to show later on. Um, but I do remember having them when I was a kid and I loved them. Um, I think they're, I'll see if I can get them uh, at one point because it's nice to kind of because I'm not like I'm not like a massive fan of like get, getting children's related stuff. These aren't necessarily children's stuff, even though it's suitable for children. It's more like Disney. I don't really collect any Disney tapes. I have got one, I believe, which I'll show at some point. Um, but a lot of them mm, kind of like PG and 15 and the stuff that I'm into, you know, so um, it's not particularly something that I go out and get. But I think because it's stuff that I remember growing up with and loving as a kid, I will probably end up getting them at some point. The next um, six, I believe, they're all Jeremy Clarkson tapes. I'll just get one of them out before I talk about the others. So Jeremy Clarkson is a very, very popular British figure. He, um, as, the, as the sticker says here, he was a star on uh, Top Gear. Um, this was the before the 2002 relaunch of Top Gear. Um, but he was a very, very, very popular presenter um, of Top Gear. And unfortunately, due to kind of some setbacks and everything, he got fired at one point. Um, and obviously, he, and since then, he's been working with Amazon for the Grand Tour. And I remember growing up with some of the Clarkson tapes. I have two copies of this. One of them I have, one of them is the one I had since I was a kid, which I haven't got a box for. Um, and this is um, another one that I've got with a box. The tape is slightly different. The label, I think, is the, the slight difference. It's slightly different on my other version, but it is still the same kind of tape and everything. Basically, this is like a, as it kind of says, it's a motorsport kind of compilation. Um, a lot of the other stuff that he does, um, kind of these home video releases, if you will, they weren't really compilations. They were just kind of just showing off a bunch of cars that he was, that he was filming. Um, but that's a, that's a compilation one. Um, in 1996, when he moved to VCI, this is Astrian, um, which I can show you on the back there. There's Astrian there. There's Astrian. Um, when he moved to VCI, they became more kind of like um, his own personal kind of just driving cars and talking about them. And this was the first one, I believe, from 1996. There is a couple I'm missing. There are a few. Um, I haven't got all of them. Um, I think I'm missing the one that he did in 1999. And I think... There might have been another one in 2002 and 2003 that I've not got, but I might have them on DVD somewhere. I can't remember. Uh, they're not in the house anyway. They're not in my room, I don't believe. But this is one of them, Unleashed on Cars, 1996, I believe, anyway. Yes. So this is um, standard kind of just moving to VCI and working for them for these. Obviously, when VCI was bought, he moved um, to To Entertain, um, which was owned by the BBC at that point, I believe. There's a VCI there. So it's nice. Back there, there we are. A bit dirty on the bottom there, but that's all right. Um, next one. Oh, actually, before I show that, there's a sticker on top of this one as well. 
which is 100% Clarkson, everything he can't do on TV. No idea why there's a sticker on there, but there's a sticker on there, so that's nice. Um, there is another sticker on the, on the top of this one as well, and it is Apocalypse Clarkson. Um, this is from 1997. So he released one every year, basically. Um, again, this is VCI. So I can open this. Come on. There we go. Um, this has got an edge label, actually. Now that I think about it, it's literally just a barcode. But there we go. And there's a bunch of other advertising stuff for VCI, because of course there is. Um, pretty standard stuff. This is just another one of those kind of um, kind of just compilation stuff. It isn't my favourite, though. Uh, my favourite is probably not this one, but the one after it. Uh, this is the 1998 version. Yes, this is the 1998 one that he did. The most outrageous Jeremy Clarkson video in the world ever. That is the longest title ever for any of these. Um, it's that's like the full title as well. I think that's the full title um, of this. I have no idea why it's that long. Usually, I just call it um, uh, Jeremy Clarkson most outrageous or something. It's very, very kind of long. It says it all on the spine as well. The most outrageous Jeremy Clarkson video in the world ever. It's such a long title. Um, but there's the back there again. Very standard stuff though. So as you would probably expect, it's just kind of apparently the most outrageous stuff that he's ever done. Um, what's interesting to me about these releases, though, is that sometimes the uh, titles on the tapes are different to the actual title of the release, which is weird. This is the copy that I've had since I was a child um, at full throttle. This is probably my favorite, but because, you know, just because I've had it since I was a kid. Um, and I've seen it so many times. This is not the best copy of it, though. I do need to get a better copy of it at one point. Uh, at some point I in the future, I probably will, because this version isn't really that good. Um, it's not terrible, ter terrible. It's a bit kind of ruined in some places. But again, it's very standard. Nothing on the inside of this one. Um, but there we go. This one features um, Vicky Butler Henderson, um, apparently. Um, yeah, 2000. So I am missing the one from 1999. I will get that at some point. I can't remember what it's called, uh, but I will get the 1999 version at one point. And this is the version from 2001, I believe. Yep. This is his top 100 cars. This was supposed to celebrate like 100 years of um, some engine or something, and he just did like his top 100 cars, which is fair enough, I suppose. Makes sense. Um, the uh, There's the spine here. There's the back there. Again, the tape is very standard. Um, the they, VCI never really kind of had decorative um, labels for some reason. No idea why they didn't, but but there we go. So those are all the kind of um, those are the Clarkson and Wallace and Gromit stuff that I have. The next bunch are all Simpsons. Um, I will show each of them at one time. I remember when I originally did this, I showed all of the Simpsons tapes at once and didn't really go much detail about them. Um, but I will show them all individually. This is the first one, at least the earliest one I have. Um, the Simpsons Collection, The Simpsons Christmas Special. This was when they were um, when they were releasing these um, at... Um, I think they were... These are two. These, these were just like... They, they were very strange releases, these. Did I miss the Wilson Gromit cassettes? No, you haven't enough of that. Um, so this is when they were releasing some of the Simpsons episodes, um, only two of them per cassette. It's very weird. I've never understood why they did this, because there's a lot of episodes, and they only bother to release... I mean, these are quite a popular series at some point, I'm assuming, but um, I never really understood why they did this. I have no idea. Um, but it has got two of the best episodes of the entire show. The original Christmas special... Um, which these days is just called uh, the, the Simpsons um, over a roasting fire or something like that. And Bart gets an F, which is considered to be the best episode of The Simpsons by many, many people. And granted, it is up there. It's definitely in like the top five um, with a lot of lists. It's always in the top five, Bart gets an F. It's a very good episode. Very, very emotional and everything. It's actually really, really good. In terms of release dates, what's the latest VHS tip in your collection? I think I'll get to that. I will get to that at some point in this in, in this live stream. It's 2004, though that's the answer, but I, I, I will get around to showing a 2004 tape at some point. This is from 1992. This was during the third 
season of the show, maybe the fourth season of The Simpsons, back when The Simpsons was actually good. And there's the tape there. Um, the box is yellow. I don't think it's the original box, though. I don't. I can't really tell if it is. Do need to re rewind this one as well. I'll keep that in mind. There we go. Just close this properly. One of the weirdest boxes. This one. It has like a little kind of nub thing there that I, I don't know how to. Don't know why that's like that. Just move those over there. Uh, next one. This is The Simpsons: Crime and Punishment. This is from 1997 so we've moved on a little bit uh, all of the others i'm going to show you here are between 1997 and 2003 most of them um between 1997 and 2000 i think i haven't i think um that this was when they were releasing four episodes on one tape which seems more reasonable because it's 88 minutes worth and 88 minutes worth for a tape is, is pr pretty good so i'm quite happy with this one this tape is actually quite nice as well it's got good episodes on it the episodes are uh, Margin Chains, Home of the Vigilante, You Only Move Twice, and Bart the Fink. So they are very good episodes. Um, you, only, you Only Move Twice is actually a very, very good episode. One of my favourites. Um, not my favourite, personally, but it is a very good episode. And Margin Chains is pretty interesting as well. So it's a good tape, this one. Um, as you would probably expect, though, the name of the tape um, is, a, is essentially like a compilation of episodes relating to crime and punishment. And, and that's for like every single one of them. So that one's like kind of like crime and breaking the law and whatnot and just kind of villainy and stuff like that. So that's what this one's about. The next one, um, which is The Dark Secrets of the Simpsons, is more kind of like um, mystery stuff, science fiction stuff, that kind of thing. Uh, again, this is from 1997. It has The Springfield Files, Homer the Great, Lisa the Iconoclast, and Homer Badman. So this is all kind of like um, just secret stuff, so kind of um, weird episodes um, that show like a very different side of The Simpsons. Um, yeah, this actually it's a very good episode. It's very good. Um, I do really like Lisa the Kind of Class. I think it's a very good episode, and Homer the Great as well is very good. Um, not my favorite personal um, uh, release, but uh, from of The Simpsons here, but it is still very good. Um, just in case you're wondering, the tapes are very standard. I think in a couple of them. I've got, they've got bonus stuff in them, which I will show at some point. I can't remember which ones have, though. Um, some of them also have edge labels, and some of them have, like, um, uh, like uh, customised labels on them. Um, this one doesn't, though. Okay, next one is... Um, oh, that's the 1998 version, I think. Yeah. The Simpsons Springfield Murder Mysteries. Uh, this one... Um, one of the most, one of the, I think this is like the, the last one I've got so far. I mean, this is the most recent I've got, but I've had it for a, a very a long time now. Um, this one is pretty obvious, I think. Springfield Murder Mysteries, so kind of, you know, the mysteries and featuring Slideshow Bob. We have Who Shot Mr. Burns Part 1 and 2, Black Widower, and Cape Fear, or Fair. I actually don't know how you would pronounce that. Guest voice being Kelsey Grammer, who does Slideshow Bob, and he's very good. This one's got a bunch of bonus stuff in it, like uh, one of those extra ones. And it has an edge label, W55526, um, whatever that means. And there's also an exclusive own your very own dough badge, because why the hell not, right? Actually, I can't remember if there's anything on the other side. Can't pick it up. Nope. So um, if, you send a, if you send a check in the mail, you receive a badge or something. This was when people bothered to email, uh, uh, didn't bother to email things, and actually sent checks in mail. Um, because that was a thing people did. Uh, this one's very nice. Um, it's the Simpsons Against the World. Um, this one's a very, very nice one, actually. I think there's two versions of this. There's a red version and a blue version. I cannot remember where I found the blue version, though, and I've never seen it since. Unless my memory's just poor. I can't remember. I swear there's a blue version, though. The episodes, um, these are all versus episodes. So we have Homer versus Patty and Selma, Marge versus the Monorail, a very, very good episode. Um, Homer and uh, versus Lisa in the Eighth Commandment, I shall not steal, and Bart versus Australia. This is a very, very popular episode, and I know that Tech Blitz will definitely say to me it's a very good episode, and it does accurately portray Australians. It's a very good episode. Um, no, oh, this, is, this one's got, um, got something in it. I can't remember what this is. Simpsons comics and comic books from Titan. Read them if you dare, man. <laughs> um, 
So it's just a bunch of comic stuff. Again, you can send a thing in the mail and you receive something. And there's just more kind of comic booky stuff on the back. Again, this was when The Simpsons was popular and people actually watched it and liked it. So there we go. The next one is um, Sex, Lies and The Simpsons. Uh, this is a very good episode um, list as well, actually. These have got some good episodes on it. The Last Temptation of Homer, Bart After Dark, New Kid on the Block and Lisa's Rival. They're all very good episodes. The cover's a bit suggestive. I'll be honest with that. The cover is very, very suggestive. Um, but it's still a PG, so I technically can show it. Um, but there we go. Again, very standard stoof on this one. Very nice, actually. It advertises um, against the world. And also advertises some of the previous ones as well, which I own all of them now. So that's good. And this one, again, more kind of comic book stuff, as you would expect. So nothing out of the ordinary there. Um, but there we go. Uh, what's the next one? The next one is... Ah, this is probably my favourite. Um, I think I like all of the episodes on here. Um, possibly my second favourite. Heaven and Hell. Uh, this is a very good batch. Again, kind of religion, heaven and hell episodes, as you would expect. Uh, this one is, uh, it's got Bart Sells His Soul, which is a fantastic episode, In March We Trust, Treehouse of Horror 4, and Homer the Heretic. And Homer the Heretic is up there as one of my favourite episodes of the entire show. I love it. And this, this has not got anything inside of it, but there you go. Some of them do have... Um, uh, uh, yellow cases and some have clear uh, clear cases. This one is from 1998. So there's that. Uh, next one is Too Hot for TV. This one is uh, also from 1998, I believe. Uh, 1999 now, so this is the 1999 version. And this one's got customised uh, labels on it, and it does have an advertisement as well, which we'll come back to. There's an edge label there. There we are. There's a label there. And it's advertising um, Simpsons go to Hollywood. Uh, and there's also a bunch of the stuff on the back for other um, Simpsons related material. I have got all of them except the top one, The Last Temptation of Homer. That's the only one I haven't got, which I will get to at some point. I will get that one because it's actually quite a, a nice one, I believe. Um, there are, again, there are a couple I am missing. I haven't got all of them, but. I, I, I do, like, proactively try and get all of them. Um, it just doesn't always happen. So what's the next one? Ah, uh, yeah, goes to Hollywood. Here we go. So this one's a little bit, um, as you can see, it's been a, kind of consumed at the bottom here. There's a, there's a crack. Um, again, customised label and edge label there. Nothing interesting inside. The episodes are um, Homer to the Max, um, Fear of Flying, Krusty Gets Cancelled, and Flaming Moe's. Flaming Moe's is my favourite episode of this bunch. Very, very nice. This one, Simpsons Go to Hollywood. I don't even know what this one's supposed to be advertising. I suppose it's just supposed to be kind of like, I don't know, like, go to Hollywood? I mean, none of these are taking place in Hollywood, as far as I can tell. I've, I've no idea. Um, I think it's just kind of like very kind of spectacular episodes and um, stuff like that. I do not know. I could be talking complete arse and I have no idea. Right. Bart Wars, The Simpsons Strike Back. You can probably guess what this one is parodying. Um, this one's got a customised label, but no edge label, which is a shame. I don't know if there was an edge label on them. I cannot remember. Um, the episodes are Mayored to the Mob, Dog of Death, The Secret War of Lisa Simpson, and Marge, Be Not Proud. Um, very um, good episodes again. These are all kind of like... These are all very popular episodes um, of The Simpsons. None of the episodes that I've shown so far are considered bad episodes. Um, and again, this kind of just keeps going forward. Even with the 2003 VHS I have of it, it's still a very popular... It's still got popular episodes on it. So, um, yeah. Let me just take that out. Um, what's next? Ah. The Simpsons, On Your Marks, Get Set, Dull, which is um, quite nice, actually. It's a really nice one. Um, edge label. Yes, it's got an edge label. It's got an edge label there. It's got some um, printing on the bottom of it because of how bad the sticker's been placed. This one's got quite a few things. Let's have a look at this. Just move that to the side. This one is um, Don't Panic. So there's the Simpsons.com, um, TBC, apparently. It's, I think it's rated 12 in the end. And it's... Um, 
The Simpsons Year Two Part Two. If you remember from episode uh, from Part One of this series, you remember that I um, did uh, show that one. Um, I got I got Year One um, on VHS. I haven't got Year Two. The years are kind of um, they are supposed to be um, the se the seasons, not just random years. Um, on the back here, we have Olive and the um, Olive the other reindeer. Um, even though it looks like a dog, which isn't really a great name. I've no idea. I've not seen it, not heard of it. Um, came out on the 6th of November 2000. And this one's a huge little booklet here. The Pewter Collection, for some reason. I don't know what that means. So it's just kind of like showing like a lot of other extra stuff. So you have like a um, little thing there. Ooh, a bonus item. You have no idea what that might be. Um, oh, there we go. More kind of more extra stuff. This bit's been taken out, I believe. I don't know if that's just been part of it. And again, you send a check in the mail and then you receive something. Um, so there we go. That is what is on this one. I'm just going to stick them underneath. There we go. There we are. Um, the final, I've got three more, three more Simpsons ones. Um, try and stand up, please. Thank you. Raiders of the Lost Fridge. This one's very good. I do like this one. Good parody, as you would expect. Um, edge label on this one? Yes, it has an edge label. There we are. Episodes are... Guess who's coming to criticise dinner? King size Homer. Burns... Um, I, okay, okay, so it's German. I will give it a go. I've not actually been able to pronounce it properly um, for a very long time. I'll give that a go. Burns Verkaufen der Kraftwerk. Um... I probably butchered that. And Lisa the Vegetarian. Uh, again, very good episodes there. So it's kind of, again, another nice compilation. Uh, the penultimate one, thesimpsons.com. Yeah, this is the only this is the only 12 one I have in my collection. All the others have been PG or U. Um, there we are there. The Simpsons. Dut There you go. Edge label. Nothing particularly interesting on this one. Um, the episodes... This is actually not my favourite. The episodes um, are Treehouse of Horror 10... Itchy and Scratchy Land, Das Bus, and Homer Goes to College. They are good episodes, but it's just not really my favourite. But there we go. And finally, Risky Business. This is one of the last ones they released. It might have been the second to last one they released. I cannot remember. This is, um, again, the only Simpsons tape I've had since I was a kid. And um, so I've watched this one plenty of times. And again, it has been kind of, uh, as you can see from the top here, it's certainly kind of butchered and everything. But it's, it's fine. It is all good. The tape is um, very standard, um, but it is from 2003. It has the 2002 to 2020 PG sticker on it, which is very nice. Um, the episodes are, if I can close this properly, uh, Reality Bites, Homer the Smithers, Deep Space Homer, and Marge Gets a Job. So there we go. This is from 2003. So we're going to let the last one's released. And those are all the Simpsons tapes I've got. Um, that is the first half of this episode of the episode of this uh, live stream done. I haven't really checked the chat though. Um, got any kind of uh, any questions or anything? Um, no, the, no. I think there was a few other. Uh, I think there might have been like one or two more uh, Simpsons tapes after Risky Business because that was from two thousand and three, and I think there were like one or two from two thousand and four. Um, I've not. Um, have a look in a while though. I think there is one. I can't. I can't remember the name of it, but I think there is one from two thousand and four. So it isn't the last one, um, but it is one of the last ones they released. I haven't got any from uh, two thousand and one or two thousand and two. So, um, but there we go. That's the first shelf um, of that done. I'm going to keep all those tapes. Sorry, I will. I will sort these tapes out again. I mean, I know which order they come in because I've got a list of the tapes here, um, like next to me. So there's like the first lot done. And uh, we're going to go on to shelf four, which is in um, in my collection on my shelf there. I've got like, um, it's seven shelves in total. So this is shelf number four. We're going to begin with yet another trilogy. Um, I do like me trilogies. Um, it is the, now that's what I call music tapes that I have. These are extensively expensive. They are stupidly expensive. And it's very hard to get them these days. I've got some of the, um, I've got three of them. Uh, I've got, now that's what I call music 1, now that's what I call music 10, and now that's what I call music 12. Um, these are actually some of the easier ones to get. 
Um, there's two versions of Now That's What I Call Music 1, um, this one. There's two versions. There's one through the Video Music Collection, and there's one through um, Virgin PMI. The others here are released through uh, Virgin PMI. I have been looking for Now That's What I Call Music tapes um, elsewhere, and they are very rare to come across. They're very, very rare. Some of them can go for, like, £50 pounds or more. Um, these ones were thankfully quite cheap. This one was like uh, this one was like five quid or six quid. This was like six to seven quid, and this one I think I got like four pounds or something. So they're very cheap. Um, these these three were, but they are they are becoming very rare. In fact, I've not seen none. That's what I call twenty because I released one to twenty on VHS, except for nineteen for some reason. I've no idea why they didn't release twenty uh, nineteen on, on VHS. They didn't. No idea why they didn't, but they should have done. Um, now that's what I call 20 was the last one. And I've only seen like a handful of people sell them on eBay. There is one currently going. And the last time I checked, it was like 18 pounds worth, which isn't terrible, but it's probably gone up in price a lot. Actually, I can check. I will check now. Um, it's been a while since I've checked, but I will have a look and see how um, expensive it is going for at the moment. If I can remember who sold it. I don't know if it's still a bid or not. I think it's still a bid. Yes. It's still going for £18, but it's got 11 bids at the moment, and it is one of the rarer ones as well. Very, very rare to come across. Um, it's, it's strange, because I don't, I don't think it really should be, but it is it is one of the rarer ones. Um, but yeah, it's also in a black case, which is weird. Normally I see them in clear cases. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Um, let's close that down. I will come back to eBay at some point. The um, I mean, it's pretty obvious. These are obviously just the music videos of the... Um, songs from these original cds slash vinyls um i think they were vinyls uh, correct me if i am wrong um and these are just the music videos that accompany them that's all there is the, the songs are obviously part of them They're, those are the songs on the back there these actually get shorter as they go on for some reason i've no idea why um there's uh 21 on here this is the longest one there's 21 on there i didn't realize how dirty that is at the bottom i have to clean that at some point might just be a bit of dust yeah, I think it's just a bit of dust. I will clean that. Um, there's 15 on this one, and there is 16 on this one. So, again, it's just, just the music videos. Um, the tapes are pretty interesting, though. Um, this was technically the first pre-cert tape I bought, but I didn't really count it as a pre-cert tape because, well, I originally thought it was from 84 slash 85, and it isn't really pre-cert, but it is still pre-cert. It's from 83, so it is pre-cert. I didn't realize at the time. Edge label. Which is very nice. There's some random uh, guff on the one of the sides here. There's a print date there. Um, I think she's starting to wear off a little bit there. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's starting to age. It's starting. They, they, they are starting to age. So are my tapes in my collection. The ten tape. I'll just get the now that's what I call ten there. There's the now that's what I call ten tape. They're very standard. Is in the original box. They're all in the original boxes, I believe, which is nice. This one is in a video music. Uh, uh, video collection box, which is nice. Uh, and the 12 tape, again, nothing particularly interesting, um, but it is in the original box. So they're, they're, they are rare. They're very expensive um, to get. I might get a couple more, but I'll have to see. They are very rare to come across. Um, but um, yeah, we'll just pop those on the floor there as we move on to one of my favorite films. We're back to like regular films now. Um, one of my favorite films from the 80s, Gandhi. Uh, it's very, very good, Gandhi. I remember watching it in religious education class at some point, um, and I really, really enjoyed it. And this is the second VHS release of it. They, there was a bunch of other ones. This is the one of the earlier ones. This cost me like four quid. So it was very cheap, which was very good. Um, it's a very good film. If you haven't seen Gandhi, I do recommend that you watch it. It's three hours long, so don't get me wrong about its length. It's incredibly long, but it's um, it's certainly worth looking into. I don't think there's anything too interesting on the tape there. There you go. Standard stuff. There we go there. Let me try and close that. This one's a bit of a pain to close. Game on. There we go. There we are. Try to check and make sure everything is still working fine. Yeah, it's it's a long film though, three hours. I think it's slightly longer than that actually. Um, approximately one hundred and eighty-one minutes. So yeah, it's three hours long. Very long film, but 
it's a very good film. Do not get me wrong. The next one, I actually don't even know how I ended up getting this, but I, I did. Black Adder Goes Forth. Um, I don't know anything about it. I've not watched this at all. I've not really paid much attention to it. But it has been on my shelf for a very long time, and I can't really be bothered to get rid of it. So I'm not going to bother getting rid of it. Um, if any of you like Black, uh, Black Adder Goes Forth, please let me know what it is. Um, what's interesting to me, though, and this is something I've never understood, about it is that as you can see um, if i show the spine there there's the old bbc logo from the 90s and yet that's the modern one don't really know how that happens the it does say copyright 1990 the print date does say 120702 so the tape is from 2002 which makes sense and this is from 1990. I, I mean, I, I always put them in order of based on the copyright date on the labels, rather than the tapes themselves, um, which is very weird to me. Now, I can't... I mean, I regret buying this one, but... Eh. Um, again, very similar to the Now tapes, the Thomas tapes are very expensive. Uh, the Guild ones are stupidly expensive. They're the most expensive ones. They're the rarest. They go for, like, they're, they're just really expensive. I have seen quite a few of them, and they do go for quite high prices. Um, the Betamax versions are very rare. They, I mean, stupidly rare, but this is um, just one of them here. This one's got an edge label, which I realized. There we go. Thomas the Tank Engine, Time for Trouble. It's a 1991 VHS here. I bought this because I was in a server that like, really likes Thomas. Um, and I remember just kind of saying, should I just get one? And they were like, yeah, all right. So I bought one. And this is like the cheapest. Um, I mean, I kind of regret buying it now, though, because it's just, a, it's, such, it's, a, it's such an oddity in my collection. I know that, like, um, uh, I, I, I know that I said earlier that um, the uh, I don't really collect children's related stuff, but eh, there you go. I'm not going to say much about that one, really. What's next? We have... Oh, this is a nice one. Robocop 1 and 2. This is a very interesting uh, little double bill, as it's known for some reason. This is just very simply a... Um, a just a just one tape of two films. Robocop 1 and 2. Thankfully, they didn't release a third one. Oh, wait, they did. Um, yeah, so Robocop 1, brilliant film. Robocop 2, decent sequel. Robocop 3... Almost vomit inducing. Did not like it. Um, but there we go. It's not a very good film, Robocop 3. I don't bother with Robocop 3. But there we go. Very tape, standard stuff. It's actually quite long as well, because these films are relatively long. Uh, there's the spine. They're very faded. I actually bought this. Um, there's two versions, actually, of this one. And this is the later version, I believe. It might be from 1992. From 1992? Yes. 1992. Uh, there's two versions. There's one from VVL, which is what this version is, uh, as you can see from the back there. Uh, there's also another one from Polygram. But when I bought it, the Polygram was the one that was pictured. But I can't really complain since I got it anyway. I also got it in a very bad case, and I ended up upgrading the case. So that's why, even though it's like it's faded and, and horrible, the original was even worse, the actual case. So this one's nice. Um, so why not the original tape that goes with this box, uh, with the uh, the original box that goes with the tape, sorry. Um, it's um, it's not really going to cause that much trouble, really, is it? So there we go. I do, honestly, I do try very hard to keep my tapes in original boxes because it is hard to get the boxes on their own. It's not something that you see that often. I know that you can get, like, clear cases. Getting clear cases is very fine, but getting specifically packaged ones, it's very hard to do. Um you kind of have to just hope half the time that you're going to get one. Next one, another double feature, another double bill for some reason. Uh, Pink Panther and The Shot in the Dark. I mentioned um, in the first live stream that I had the Pink Panther films, and this is the other one I have. And to go with it, I have the fourth Pink Panther film, The Pink Panther, uh, The Return of the Pink Panther. Um, this one, again, is slightly faded, but it's not too bad. This one is also slightly faded. Again, not too bad. Nothing particularly interesting on the tapes, though. I'll try and open it up. There we go. It does come with um the with the original receipt though when this was bought. Sure. When, when was this bought again? Um, twenty first of August, nineteen ninety three. 
which makes sense given that these tapes are from 1992. I think so anyway. Are they both from 1982? Yes. Um, no, The Return of the Pink Panther is from 1993, apparently. Um, is it? Yes, it is. Again, nothing standard there. I think the tape on this one's actually a bit of a later re a release because it's got the Polygram logo there from 1997, and uh, this is not the Polygram, so I do not know, but there we go. Let's pop those two there. Um, God, these are going to be quite a difficult ones to get. Right. Um, I'm going to try and reach over. I'm going to have to take these out of my ears for a second. Try and just move these a lot forward. The last bunch. Oh, these are really heavy, you know. You'd be very surprised to be very surprised to know that these these are quite heavy, um, but there we go. We just get my hands back out. There we go. Um, so the next one, which I have shown before, if you remember, I mentioned this in my video on Castle, um, Castle video, Castle Vision, how to irritate people um, from 1968. I think I said in the video, even though yes, 1968. I realise later on it's from 1993, but I, there's no specific copyright date of when this is, so I'm just going with the fact that it's 1993. If anyone does know when this VHS release was released, please let me know, because I still can't seem to figure it out. The, the closest that I have is 1993. So there we go. Next one is A Few Good Men. Um, this is actually quite a nice film. I already watched it at one point, and it's not actually that bad. Um, I didn't like it the first time. Oh, there's Oh, dust. I love a bit of dust. I watched it the first time when I got it, and I was like, eh, it's not really like the most satisfying film, but it's definitely still worth watching. Um, just trying to take that out. What's this? This is just a two pounds off thing for other tapes that I don't own, which is nice. All right, let's pop it back in there. I think the label here is a bit of a different version. Um, it says 1992, Columbia TriStar Home Video. This version says Columbia tries to home video. No, I don't know. I think it, I think it actually might be a, a different version. I don't know. There's no um, print date, so I do not know. And also, this can't this can't close properly. But there we go. Um, there we are. You'd be quite surprised to know these are quite heavy. Maybe I could use them as a dumbbell weights during my gymnastics. At the peak. Well, you could do. <laughs> I mean, the, the, even though I've said in like previous videos that tapes aren't um, uh, tapes aren't really that heavy, when you have like a bunch of them together, they are heavy. Now, I do actually have a really big soft spot for the next one. Um, I, I liked it. I did also dislike it because it's you know it's an Eddie Murphy film and it's not the greatest out there compared to his other work, but it is still kind of funny and kind of goofy and everything. It's the Golden Child. This one I've had um for quite a while now it's very nice it's a very nice tape i think it's from 1994 again there's no print date so i've never figured out when it's from but the inside uh copyright thing says 1994 i believe no it says 1993 i don't know when this was released um is there a print date on this i don't think so it's just a bunch of numbers oh, i'll never figure it out but there we go the golden child the golden child is actually a really good film not terrible so it's again a bit dirty a bit dusty get, get off um but it's still still very good there we are next one what's the next one ah okay these next two um i had these um the as i mentioned earlier in the live stream uh i was going to come back to tapes that i had since i was a child but i had to get different versions of them because we threw them away um and when i when i found these again i kind of cried because i i do remember having these as a kid or at least one of these when i was a kid and i loved them so much and then i found them again on ebay and i was like yeah i'm gonna buy them and it did it did come with a second tape as well which i didn't have as a kid but i'm gonna show anyway so it's look at that digger and the other one is look at that plane so, um, oh, try and put them in the shot there. There we go. So, um, so look at that digger was um, a tape that I had when I was um, a child. Uh, we watched it so much. I remember a lot about it. Um, it's kind of like it's one of those things where it, like you love it so much it just stays in your mind. And it was released through Matchbox, who had like a massive deal. They had like well, Matchbox, in case you don't know, is a diecast um, kind of 
plastic toy maker company. Quite a popular one in America, I believe, um, if I'm not mistaken. Is it meant? I can't remember. I didn't really grow up with. Um, um, I, I, I don't know. I'll have, I'll have to look up again. But um, but yeah, um, the digger is um, very very popular one. It also shows footage of the um, Channel Tunnel being made, which I haven't seen before. I didn't, obviously I don't really travel that much, so I've not actually been on the Channel Tunnel, but it was very, very interesting to see the Channel Tunnel being built, um, which was very cool. And believe it or not, I actually learned something from this, from um, from this plane one, um, which is weird. A friend of mine at school loves planes. So yeah, I think this has got a bit of a, a bit of a crack in this one, but that's fine. The tape still plays fun and everything. And um, yeah, I do love them. I do love them. I think this is a 2000 release, if I'm not mistaken, a re-release, but that's fine. Not really fussed about it. This is an original 1995 version. Um, they're both from 95, the labels, but the tapes, you know, they really re-released them because of course they did. Um, so, so there we go. Very, very nice. I do, I do love that I've got those. Didn't cost me that much either. In fact, like, I can't remember how much they cost. It was like six quid or something. It wasn't that expensive. So, yeah. Also, I'm just realizing there's like almost 50 tapes here and it's getting out of hand. Uh, next one. Had this one for many years now. Have I got news for you? Have I got unbroadcastable news for you? I do like that word. And this is a pain to open. Apparently, no, it isn't. There we go. Nothing particularly fascinating on the back, except for the fact it has got, it's got the VCI logo on the back there. And yet the tape has video collection. No idea what that's about, um, but there we go. I mean, I've shown this one, that one before, so it's not particularly new to any of you. Unseen Bean, I need to upgrade this version because this tape is not very good, but it does have a top a label for some reason. Uh, it's from 1995, again, this one. There you go. Again, standard stuff. This one, again, VCI logo on the back, the video collection on the label. No idea how that works. I know, I know it's the same company, but it's a different logo and it just makes no sense. Um, that's the first 15 rated video collection tape I've seen. Really? Hmm. I mean, I know it was 15, but is it really the first one? I suppose to be fair, VCI did release a bunch of, um, uh, well, children's related stuff, didn't they? So I suppose, I suppose that makes sense. There are a few other ones out there, I believe. There's a few other ones. Um, let me swap those around. Next one. Saving Private Ryan. This is a brilliant film. I, I don't really need to talk about this film that much. I have it on Blu-ray. It's absolutely incredible. I got this um, with my bundle of The Green Mile and Castaway, which I'll show in part three, which when I, whenever I do that. Um, but there we go. Saving Private Ryan. Standard. Very standard stuff. Um, a bit scratched, but it still works fine. The, the, the label, anyway, is scratched. Next one. Secrets and Lies. I haven't watched this yet, and I've been very, very, very tempted to, like, a lot of times. And also, the box is slightly broken. Didn't realise that. Trying to see if I can fix that. Nope, the box is legitimately broken. I don't know if you can see that there. I can't seem to close that at all, which is irritating, but I'll just open it up for the time being. Ah, that's why I couldn't close it, because the tape was slightly up. There you go. I fixed it. Look, I fixed it. Right, anyway, so the tape itself, Secrets and Lies, um, it's a British film. Um, it didn't cost me anything, I got this for free. £3.99, I, I know, right? Cheap as hell. Uh, it's from 1996. The film is from 1996. And apparently, it's very, very good. And yet, I have not seen it at all. Um, I've been wanting to um, a lot. I just haven't really had the, the time to. I've just been completely kind of forgotten about it. And then I keep I keep seeing it like every now and then, and people kind of be like, "Well, it's actually a really good film. You should watch it." And it's just like, "Yeah, but what if it's not? What if I don't like it? I don't know. Um, I really don't know." But yeah, it's it's a very nice one. Chicken Run reference. Well, here you go. That was a really bad segue, right? Um, but yeah, Chicken Run. Um, again, it's an it's an Ardman stuff. It's an Ardman film. And as all of you should know, I am a big fan of Ardman. I do love me Ardman stuff. Um, I do really love Ardman, uh, as I've said. And Chicken Run is the first feature film from them. It came out in 2000. Um, I, wasn't, I wasn't born to see it in the cinemas. I wish I was. 
but there we go. Um, chicken run there, Pathé, nicely done. I am so looking forward to the sequel. I, I mean, I've been looking forward to a sequel for any um, Ardman stuff for years, and now they've finally got around to it. No video collection is complete without Ardman. Yes, absolutely. That is that is my new phrase. I am now calling that for Ardman. You can have that phrase. But there we go. There's chicken run for you. Um, in a blue case, that one. That's the only one I have so far that's in a blue case, apart from my tape of Harry Potter. Speaking of Harry Potter, this is a completely stupid segue, and it's nothing to, to do with it. Four Weddings and a Funeral. Um, this is a 2001 VHS release of a film from 1993. And again, well, no, that's, no. I was about to say, I haven't seen it. Then I realised I have. Uh, it's been a very long time since I have seen it, though, and I can't remember that much about it, so that was pretty, you know, pretty dumb. Um, the tape is a bit kind of... Dirty, there's an old sticker there that used to be there, but I cannot remember um, much about this film. It was good, can't remember much about it. It's a comedy, as it blatantly says on the top there. I need to have a look at that again at some point. Just can't remember much about these films. Uh, what's this one? Oh, Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. All of the Lord of the Rings films were released on VHS, but of course, because they're very popular films and over the years, there have been multiple releases of this film on home video. In fact, it's almost like a necessity to have Lord of the Rings um, back then. And back when the films first came out, they released them on VHS. Um, so there was a VHS of um, Lord of the Rings here. Um, the first one, anyway, The Fellowship of the Ring. I think it's the first one. I'm not really a massive fan of these films, I'll be perfectly honest. I mean, they're brilliant. Do not get me wrong. Um, they are absolutely fantastic films. It's just I'm not really massively into them, I'll be honest. I have seen that they have been re uh, recently re-released on 4K, um, which is very awesome. Um, but I'm stuck here with a, a three-hour, almost three-hour long VHS of it. Can't remember how I got that, but I got it. So, here we go. Uh, we're down to the final four um, epic music playing. This is the only Disney-related Disney -related film I have, uh, Monsters, Inc. It, it's a classic. I do love Monsters, Inc. Um, I got this for like 50p, so it was stupidly cheap, absurdly cheap. Um, it does have some leaflets, though. Um, three leaflets, Jesus Christ. It has a very... It has a, a monster... That's actually freakier in real life than the one in the film, um, which is weird. We have Disney Channel related stuff, the Kids Awards. Oh, I haven't actually had a look at this yet. We have Disney Channel Kids Awards Have Your Say, and it has Anton Deck, Will Young, S Club, Simon Cowell, David Beckham, A1, Recess, Blue, and Monsters Inc. on the front of it. I actually can't remember what the categories are. What are the categories actually? Best male group slash artist, best female group slash artist. Act of the Year, Best Dance Act, Best Newcomer, Best Footballer, Favourite TV Star, Best Villain um, from the films, presumably, uh, Best Film, um, <laughs> Star Wars 2, ep Star Wars Episode 2 is a nomination for Best Film, according to Disney. I wanted to swear then. Best Disney Channel Programme, and for some very weird reason, Favourite Food. Because why not, right? Um... You always need that at the end of the day. And Disney DVD. This was when Disney DVD was a thing. Remember Disney DVD? Jesus Christ, this is a long fucking like accordion, this. Um, there's a bunch of Disney Disney stuff on it. What can you get on Disney DVD? Loads of things. This can't fold back normally. Can you fold back, please? I don't think that's how you fold it back normally, but there you go. Thank you. There we go. Um, put this back in there. So yeah, oh, and the actual label itself has got like all the signatures of the characters, which is quite nice. Obviously, they're very fake. Obviously, these are not actual signatures, but it's nice to have, nice to see that. And again, it's a blue tape, and I don't have that many blue tapes, so it's nice. Um, let's pop that there. Uh, what's next? Yeah, I've not really watched this one at all. Welcome to Collingwood. I know nothing about Welcome to Collingwood. I, I've had this for, for, for so long, and I've not watched it. It's a 2003, I think, VHS. Um, the film presumably came out in 2002. Um, I just, eh. Not really into it. Um, but there we go. I mean, it, it, it's it got the, fifth, the, the, the 2002 15 rating on it. That's 
something, isn't it? No, it isn't. Um, the final two. Um, I have watched one of these. Ow. Man and Boy. Um, George, pick myself then. Man and Boy. This one is a bit ruined, but it is very still very nice. Um, it is a 2004 VHS, yes. But the actual tape itself is not from 2004. Um, it's an actual TV film, I think, from the BBC. It was released in 2002, apparently. Um, it's adapted from a novel from Tony Parsons and played by a great British cast. It includes Ian McShane and Pauline Collins. Man and Boy is hilarious and heart-rending look at father-son relationships. I bet it isn't. Um, so there's that. And the final tape I have in this little collection here is Trapped. You may remember, some of you may remember I got this, I watched it, and found it stupid. I hated this film. Didn't like it at all. I just didn't. It, it was just, it wasn't really that good. It was just kind of, look, a girl's been kidnapped. you got to go rescue her. But you must do everything I tell you to, to get her back. And that's it. I found this so boring, so horrible. And it wasn't even, even the sex scenes weren't that good. Like, it's everything about this film was terrible. I just didn't like it. The only thing about this film that I found somewhat redeeming was the cinematography. And that was it. Like, that was the only thing I found interesting. The characters were just completely forgettable and nothing was interesting. It wasn't even that much of big of a success when it first came out. And I'm very, very surprised they had the balls to release it on VHS. But there we go. Um, yeah. Let me try and keep picking my fingers. I mean, I've opened so many cases, my hands keep going red. So there we go. That's like, that's the um, that's it for today, I suppose. There isn't really um, anything else to show you. I'll show my hands. Um, whilst I've got them, I might as well just... I'll just leave them there. I will um, put these back on my shelf eventually, but I need to check the chat and just make sure any uh, comments... Um, more mismatching. Can anyone explain why these tapes keep getting mismatched? Um, good question. Um, well, because people are idiots. Um, there are lots of people out there that just can't seem to take care of their things, and um, they just put the put things in the wrong box. Although it's not always um something that they do intentionally, because. A lot of releases just have the same tape, but um, it's just an older version. Um, it's quite obvious with certain releases, um, which I don't think I have any good examples of, but it's when they have the modern rating, the 2002 rating, but the tape has the older rating, the 1985 to 2002 looking rating. The, the reason why they do that is because um, it's, it's just easier, because what's the point in kind of um like what what's the point in uh like just making the same tape again when you can just re-release the same tape but just have a different packaging um it's it, it, i it's it's easier honestly so it isn't entirely like it's not like always a, a person's fault um that's just the the thing that the company does but it, it's really irritating when it's some when it's like when it's like um, for someone like me who likes to keep their tapes in original sleeves in original boxes and you can't like my to be or not to be tape which I showed last time it's a CVS Fox tape but the box is from Palace which I, I don't even know how you get from CVS Fox to Palace it's just like oh spare box I'll just use that it it doesn't really make sense. Um, why someone would do that i don't even understand how people can lose their boxes because it's so easy to to keep things in boxes i mean the boxes are huge it's not like it's not like you can like um lose them or anything they're, they're quite big they're big enough i mean just as an example just to put to a side i mean this is a dvd release and this is a vhs they're they're bigger like it's it's not hard to to distinguish them and it, it's not hard to lose it. it it shouldn't it shouldn't be easy to lose them i mean dvds they're very thin they're technically they can cause more damage technically because it's a disc and you can easily scratch them um they're thinner they're just smaller and everything um 
Some boxes are even bigger than this. They're not even the same width as you can see. Like, they're not even the same width. Like, I, I just don't understand how people can lose, like, how people can lose DVDs, um, but, and yet people always lose VHS tapes as well. It just doesn't really, it's not, it's not difficult to do. Um, by the way, screw this film, top secret, brilliant film. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the end of this stream. I hope that you enjoyed part two. Uh, soon enough, I will do part three, where I will show the last 54, I think, um, uh, maybe 55, actually, I haven't had a look yet, uh, of my collection. Um, so you're going to see quite a few oddities next time because that's where, like, the more interesting stuff, this is kind of like the general stuff, really, like the extra stuff that I have in my, on my shelf. But uh, shelves five, six, and seven have more interesting things on them, um, which I will, that's my keyboard, that I will show at some point. It will be by, it will be probably by the weekend of this week because I'm going back to school on the 19th. So expect to, expect to see them uh by at the end or by during the weekend or something um but yeah thank you very very much for watching this stream and thank you very much for putting up with my stupid voice i really hope that you um enjoyed this stream and i also hope um since i've released the trailer of the jaws video I, if you haven't seen that trailer by all means go have a look um but um if you want to see that trailer go go by all means have a look and I will see you either in the next stream or when the Jaws video comes out on June the 20th. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching um, this stream. Really hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you all um, another time. So, uh, good, good goodbye.